Hello. In a previous video, I talked about using this PowerX battery analyzer to charge and analyze nickel metal hydride and NICAD batteries. Well, a friend of mine is having problems with some rechargeable batteries that he uses for a digital camera. He bought, uh, coincidentally, PowerX brand nickel metal hydride AA cells for a digital camera. His camera uses two AA cells in series. And he, he bought four, so he has two sets of batteries for his camera. But he gave them to me because he's having trouble with his camera. He's finding that these batteries are not operating the camera nearly as, as long as he would like, the, like them to. So he thinks there's something wrong with these batteries. And this PowerX analyzer is a perfect tool to use to check these batteries and identify their fault. The first thing we can do to check some batteries like this it's just to, to give them a physical inspection. So first you want to look at the battery, make sure that there isn't any obvious damage, make sure that both the top and bottom terminals are good and clean and not rusty or corroded or dirty. You also want to look around the top of these cells. There are some vent holes around the top of these cells and if the internal pressure gets too high, either because of a cell fault or because they were charged or discharged too quickly, the battery can vent it will automatically release the buildup of pressure inside of the cell. And usually as a result, you can see some uh, white powdery chemical around the top of the cell near the vent holes. I checked all four of these, of these cells and they all look to be in good condition. These are PowerX brand. They're rated at 2700, it just says 2700, they mean 2700 milliamp hours of capacity. But underneath that it says minimum capacity 2,500 milliamp hours. So for the purposes of our test today, I will consider these to be 2,500 milliamp hour cells. So there's no obvious damage. Now we're ready to go ahead and put these on the analyzer and run some tests and see what the problem is. We'll start with uh, just a basic analyze function. So in the previous video, you might see where it says refresh slash analyze on the display. The instruction manual that is included with this charger will tell you specifically how to use the refresh analyze function. So I won't go into the details step by step of how to use the device, but rather I'll talk a little bit more about the theory today about charging and discharging these cells and some basics about testing cells to identify faults. So the first thing I did is I discharged the cells uh, just because out of curiosity, I didn't know what state the cells were in when he gave them to me to test. I didn't know if he had discharged them in the camera or if he had charged them first. So I just did an, an initial discharge and I wrote the, the, the uh, capacities down that the analyzer gave me just in case I'm curious later on, but they don't mean a whole lot. The main test I want to run is the analyze or refresh analyze on this device. So uh, I ran each of the cells through this analyze function at a specific charge and discharge rate. And I'll talk about how to find that rate in just a minute. Um, in the first video I did about this charger, I, didn't, I did not go into detail about how to determine the charge and discharge rates to use. I just said that this device could use whatever charge and discharge rate you want to use within certain parameters. So in a, mo in a moment, we'll actually look at a data sheet for these cells. We'll talk a little bit about charging theory, and we'll identify what rates to use for charge and discharge. So I ran the analyze function. And I got good results. The batteries were at uh, nearly their rated capacity. Which, so initially, these cells look good. They passed the main test that I wanted to run, which is the refresh analyze, because that test gave you the actual uh, capacity of each cell. And it was, I'll show you the, these actual results in a minute, but it was nearly the rated capacity for each cell. The next thing I wanted to check is the self-discharge rate of these cells. One problem that I found with both NICADs and nickel metal hydride is even though the cell appears to be good on a simple test like a refresh analyze, if you let the, sit, the cell sit for a period of time, uh, say a week, two weeks, or a month or so, you'll find that once you go to use the cell, it's dead or nearly so because the cell has developed a problem. It has developed a high self-discharge rate. Self-discharge simply refers to the amount of capacity that the cell loses while it's just sitting on the shelf, not being used. In general, NICAD batteries have a lower self-discharge rate than nickel metal hydride. 
the lower the self-discharge rate, the better, because the lower the rate is, the longer you can keep the battery on the shelf and still have, a, have an adequate capacity when you go to use it. So let's take a closer look at my test results. I've already ran these batteries through both of those tests, the refresh, analyze, and the self-discharge, and I've got some results. We'll also take a look at the data sheet and talk about charging theory a little bit so that you understand how I chose what rate, what current rate to use for charging and discharging these cells. Okay, so here are the four cells in question, and I've numbered them on this paper, one through four. This helps me keep track of the cells during testing. So these are the notes that I took while I was making these tests. First was that initial discharge that I talked to you about. Now over here, I wrote 0.2C, which is 500 milliamps in this case, or close to it. These batteries have a capacity of 2,500 milliamp hours. So that's the C rate. I'm discharging them at 0.2C, which is 500 milliamps. I could not find the data sheet for these particular power X cells, but I found the data sheet for a similar energizer nickel metal hydride cell. So let's look at this data sheet, and you'll see right here, hopefully you can read it, this particular cell has a capacity of 2300 milliamp hours based on a 0.2C discharge rate. So at least for Energizer, it's a standard procedure to use a 0.2C discharge rate when you're checking the cell's rated capacity. So for these PowerX cells, I did just that. I started by discharging them at 0.2C, which in this case is 500 milliamp hours. Again, I don't know what state these cells were in when he gave them to me, so I just did a discharge just to, just to see where they stand. He said that he uses cells one and two as a pair and cells three and four as a pair. Cell one had a remaining capacity of 1,866 milliamp hours. Cell two had a remaining capacity of zero, meaning the terminal voltage was already less than 0.9 volts when I put the cell in the analyzer. The other two cells still had nearly the rated capacity. Now I mentioned on this data sheet, if we take a look at that real quick, that it has, it rates them 2300 to 1 volt. Uh, the PowerX rates them to 0.9 volts, but the difference in this case is, is negligible. I'm not too concerned about 0.9 versus 1 volt. So then the, here's the first real test that I performed on these cells, and that's the refresh analyze. If you look at the, at the meter, hopefully you can see that, if I can get the angle just right, that is this menu option oh, right there, refresh analyze. Again, I won't actually put the cells in here and run that test. You can read the instructions to see how to do that. So I chose a charge rate of 0.5C and a discharge rate of 0.2C. Now we just talked about the discharge rate but we didn't talk about how to choose a charge rate. Normally you want to charge cells at, at as low of a charge rate as possible because the faster you charge a cell, the more likely you are to overcharge it or to increase the internal temperature and therefore pressure and cause the cell to vent. So I would charge these at, a, a trickle charge would be like 0.05 C for a trickle charge. But here's the problem. This PowerX analyzer charges cells and it has a, what's called a delta V or a change in voltage charge detection circuit. So this unit charges the cells until it detects the cell terminal voltage to drop just slightly. So if, let me get a piece of paper and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is a kind of a side note to our discussion, but if I make a very simple graph here, on the y-axis, we have voltage, and on the x-axis, we have time. And let's say that this is, let's say that's 1.2 volts. That's the nominal voltage for the cell. So, and let's say we're charging a cell, and it starts out about 0.8 volts, let's say for our example. As you charge the cell, the voltage will slowly increase like this until it reaches a certain point as the cell is at full capacity the cell voltage will actually start to drop just a hair and the, the delta T charging circuit detects 
that change in voltage right there, that small drop, and it shuts off the charging circuit because at that point, the cell is fully charged. Any further current across that cell will just increase its temperature and serve to damage the cell. So that's the basics of a delta V, a change in voltage. So here's the problem. If you use too low of a charging current, this graph will be drawn out so much because it takes so long to charge that that small kink up here is very hard to detect. So you have to charge these cells. Um, there's no exact number, but I use 0.5C as the minimum charging current for this circuit to work correctly. The faster you can charge these cells very quickly on this circuit because it is intelligent enough to shut off the charger without overcharging the cell. So you can do uh, charge rates as high as is 1C or even 2 or 3C safely with this PowerX charger. But in this case, I'll choose 0.5C. That's fast enough for the circuit to properly detect that change in voltage, but it's not so fast that it could destroy the cell or abnormally increase the temperature of the cell. So that's how I have a charge current of 0.5C, and I chose 1300 milliamps. You can't, you can't type in an exact uh, value. You, you have to round it off to the nearest 100 milliamps. So a charge rate of 0.5C, a discharge of 0.2C. What that charger does is it charges the cell until it is fully charged, waits two hours, discharges the cell until the terminal voltage reaches 0.9 volts, then it gives you the capacities, and then it recharges the cell at 0.5C again. So I was able to discharge cell 1 to 2379, 2367, 2402, and cell 4 to 2428. These numbers are, none of them are 2500, and that's the rated capacity. So already these cells are starting to age because they did not reach 2500, but these are still plenty high enough for a digital camera. For our application, I'm very happy with these, with these numbers. I'm also happy with how closely matched they are. 2379, 2367, that's a good pair right there. 2402, 2428, that's also a good pair. You want to have the cells matched in capacity as closely as possible when you're using them in, in groups or in a battery. Technically, a battery is a collection of cells being used together. Uh, just, an individual, just an individual unit, truly this is not a battery. It's just one. It's just one unit, so that's a cell. Just a side note that I happen to think of. So, the end result is it passed this test with flying colors. No problem at all. I don't see a problem with these cells yet. So the next thing I did is a self-discharge. Now, this is very simple. Excuse me. This is very simple. You, after, after the analyze function, the charger charges the cells at 0.5 C until they're fully charged. I just wrote down the date that that analyze function was complete, which was February 14th. I waited one week, seven days. So on February 21st, I put the cells back in the charger and I just set them to discharge. So if you can see that, that is, I realize it's dark and out of focus, but that's discharge right there. So I just put the cells back in the charger and discharge them at again 0.2C, 500 milliamps, after, uh, after they sat for seven days. And here's the results. 2191, 1605, 2233, 2259. As a percentage of their earlier capacity, 92%, 68, 93, 93. So you can say that after seven days, these cells retain 92 to 93% of their original charge, except for this one. So it appears we have one cell that has a much higher self-discharge rate and the other, other three cells. Based on that result alone, I, I think it's safe to say that cell number two has a, a self-discharge problem and should be taken out of service and replaced. And I just did a final charge at 0.5C. Uh, these results aren't real helpful. This, the capacities that it gives you after charging just tell you what the capacity was when the charging circuit shut off. So it's good to make sure that these are close to the cell's rated capacities. 
just to make sure the cells truly are fully charged. But they're not real helpful because these don't tell you what the cells actually can be discharged to. So that's the final charge. So what's the end result? Cell 2 has a high self-discharge problem. It should be taken out of service. But cells 1, 3, and 4 passed all of these tests, and they should operate his digital camera without any problem. If you want to do some more testing, we can do a, a longer uh, self-discharge test. Seven days really is not very long. Any, any good cell, or even a marginal cell, should hold most of its charge for at least seven days. So I, I wrote down the date of February 21st. I might let these cells go two or even three weeks. And then I'll do another discharge test after a longer period of time has elapsed, just to see what, the, uh, what their capacities are after uh, several weeks. That'll give us a better idea of how long these batteries will last on the shelf. And it'll also help us to see if there's any uh, abnormalities, any anomalies that could indicate that there's a problem with one of these cells. But based on these tests, especially cells three and four, this pair right here should work just fine. So there you go, folks. That is one application of a PowerX Wizard One charger for identifying faulty NICAD and nickel metal hydride cells. I hope you like it, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you like the other videos that we have posted, I invite you to subscribe to our videos. Thank you much.